Meditation is an extremely popular practice performed by millions around the world daily. It is estimated that the amount of people that meditate globally ranges between 200 and 500 million people. The first documentations of meditation existing dates back to around 5000 to 3500 BC in India, where there are wall arts showing people seated in meditative postures with half-closed eyes. Over time, more and more religions and cultures started incorporating existing meditation techniques and developing their own, taking root and evolving all the while. Today, people practice meditation for many reasons. It is said to reduce stress, anxiety, or insomnia. There have also been some extreme cases in the past where people have practiced meditation to withstand extreme physical conditions. For example, a Dutch extreme athlete named Wim Hof set the Guinness World Record for being completely submerged in freezing temperatures for almost two hours under ice without his core body temperature changing. He had even climbed through the death zone on Mount Everest barefoot in just a pair of shorts. He believes we can push the limits of our bodies in ways much further than we think by following the Wim Hof method, which utilizes different breathing exercises that train the body to breathe actively and take control of our nervous system. But is there any truth behind it? Are scientists today able to explain how and why meditation works or whether it can allow us to access any unharnessed power in our minds? Or is meditation just a type of placebo effect with no real scientific evidence of how it works? But first, what exactly is meditation? There is no universally accepted definition of meditation or agreement among researchers on the details of what it entails. There are many different types of meditation with different origins and purposes. The most popular type in the West is mindfulness meditation, which originates from Buddhist teachings, and it is essentially where you pay attention to your thoughts as they pass through your mind. Neuroscientists have studied the physical effects of meditation using fMRI, functional magnetic resonance imaging, which not only takes pictures of the brain as a regular MRI does, but also records brain activity occurring during the scan. With fMRI, scientists have found that mindfulness meditation may spark renovations in the brain's functions and structure. It appears to activate a network of brain regions that include the insula, associated with empathy and self-awareness, the anterior cingulate cortex, which regulates blood pressure and the heart rate, and the prefrontal cortex, which is associated with thinking skills such as planning, decision-making, and moderating social behavior. It has also been proposed that meditation can act as a buffer against stress, where it increases activity in the regions of the prefrontal cortex that is important for managing stress, while it reduces activity in the amygdala, which is associated with the brain's fight or flight response. Many studies have investigated meditation for different conditions, and there's evidence that it may reduce blood pressure as well as symptoms of the irritable bowel syndrome. A 2016 study funded in part of the NCCIH found that mindfulness meditation does help to control pain. This suggests that combining mindfulness with pain medications may be particularly effective for reducing pain. Another study in 2014 with over 3,500 participants suggested that mindfulness meditation programs show moderate evidence of improving anxiety and depression. But the researchers found no evidence that meditation changed health-related behaviors affected by stress, such as substance abuse and sleep. In a 2012 study, researchers compared brain images from 50 adults who meditate and 50 adults who don't meditate. Results suggested that people who practice meditation for many years have more folds in the outer layer of the brain. This process, called gyrification, may increase the brain's ability to process information. Many of the studies on mindfulness meditation are poorly designed and are compromised by inconsistent definitions of what mindfulness actually is, and they often don't use a control group to rule out the placebo effect. There are many areas where mindfulness-based programs seem to be acceptable and promising, but larger-scale, randomized, rigorous trials are needed. Over the years, the approaches to what meditation is and how to perform it have varied, which made comparing different studies more difficult. Wim Hof is a special case, and scientists today are still baffled by strong capabilities. Dr. Pickers at the Rudd Boud University Medical Center conducted a research experiment where a group of healthy volunteers including Wim Hof were administered with endotoxin, a dead cell wall component of bacteria, which causes the immune system to react as if real life bacteria has entered the body, which is supposed to trigger flu-like symptoms such as fever, chills, and headaches. Hof was administered endotoxin while practicing his concentration and meditation technique and amazingly his immune response was decreased by 50% compared to other healthy volunteers. 
In addition, hardly any flu-like symptoms were observed. Although this is surprising, Wim Hof is just a single individual and therefore cannot serve as scientific evidence for the hypothesis that our body's nervous system and immune response can be influenced through concentration and meditation techniques. But can meditation be harmful? The effects of meditation are not always positive or harmless. There have been rare reports that meditation could cause or worsen symptoms in people with certain psychiatric problems like anxiety or depression. Mindfulness is an elusive quality to study. It's an internally generated experience, not a drug that scientists can give to a patient. It is very difficult to bring in such a rich spiritual concept into a standardized framework and a scientific method for testing and potentially advising patients. So in conclusion, so far there isn't any real evidence for meditation being able to cure serious health conditions, but there are several promising cases which show that meditation can complement a person's treatment or help them cope with pain, anxiety, and insomnia, which is likely due to the brain being calmer. However, it is hard to say if it has a direct correlation because studies still have a long way to go to answer that. Still, people who use mindfulness meditation to ease daily stress say they're convinced the practice improves their lives. One day, scientists hope to link that experience to what's physically happening in the meditating mind.